So it's become apparent to me that it is time for me to update my Lightroom import tutorial. And here it is. Importing is such an important part of being a photographer. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, you've got to learn to use the import screen on Lightroom correctly so that you can have your images organized, put in the right place in your hard drive, you know where they are. And of course, you can get to editing them quicker in Lightroom because they'll be in the Lightroom catalog. Now, full disclosure, I am using Lightroom Classic version 11.0. 4.1. I will not be covering Lightroom CC. That is cloud based and more mobile oriented and I don't like it. <laughs> I much prefer Lightroom Classic. It's much better for a variety of reasons, which I'll probably cover in another video. So let's get on with it. I've got Lightroom Classic open here. I'm in the library module. Let me expand. There we go. I'm in my library and I'm going to put in my SD card from my camera into my USB card reader and that will allow me to access those files. So and I'm with Lightroom open. I'm going to go up to file and import photos and video. And here we are at the scary, confusing and very intimidating import screen. Don't you worry, I'm going to break this down into separate pieces and explain to you what everything does and how to get the most out of it according to what you need, because everyone imports and organizes their files a little bit differently. So I'll try my best to give you an unbiased view as to the different features and what you might use them for. So the best way to break down an intimidating program is just to look at it in sections and squares. So first, we're going to look at this square over here on the left, this left panel. This is the from right, the source of your files. Where are they coming from? Well, it's automatically selected my G drive, which is my SD card. You can manually click on where the stuff is if it's got it the wrong one. Um, you can also click on devices and go to my G drive, which is my EOS digital SD card. And on here, I've got a number of raw images and video files from my Canon R6, which is why they are .CR3. That is the new raw format for Canon's mirrorless cameras. And it's awesome. You may have noticed all these photos are checked. If I scroll all the way down, there are way too many pictures on this 128 gigabyte SD card, and they're all checked. I don't want to import them all. So I'm going to click down here, uncheck all. There we go. And now I'm going to make my selection. So this middle section right here is your selection of what you're going to import. You don't have to import the entire card at one time. You can import one image or you can select a few random pictures. And if you hit tilde on your keypad, it will check or uncheck them. That's a quick little keyboard shortcut to turn your checkbox on. You can click on one file, hold shift and click on the ending file to grab a whole range. And of course, tilde will check those on or off. You can even deselect by holding control and getting some of these out of the selection and uh, do it that way. But let's start all over. I'm going to grab just the first few pictures of this awesome photo shoot I did of my friend's daughter. I'm just going to go down a little bit and select, I don't know, down to there. So let's just pretend this is the entire photo shoot. Everything before and after, I don't care about. I'm going to hit my tilde key on top left of my keyboard. Now they're all checked. Okay, so that's the center section. Let's go up to this top bar. We've got four options here. Two of them are grayed out. We've got copy as DNG. Then there's copy. And then there's move and add are grayed out. Let's go through the first one here. If I click on it, it actually describes right below it in gray text. This says copy to new location, comma, import, comma, and convert to DNG. So what the heck is DNG? It stands for digital negative file format. So DNG is just Adobe's attempt at making their own raw format, getting their foot in the game of the raw digital world. They're saying, hey, we could do this. Please give us attention and use our format because we think it's cool. And it is cool. I use it because it saves 10 to 20 percent on the file size. And this is probably more important. It contains all of your editing data from Lightroom inside of each raw file. Now, traditionally with raw formats from Canon, Nikon and Sony and the like, there is a separate file called an XMP sidecar file, which is a separate a small file. It's basically a text file. It looks like an HTML document and it contains all your sliders and edit stuff that we'll get to in the next stage of editing the photos. And then your editing data is also saved inside the Lightroom catalog. But if you lose your Lightroom catalog, you can kind of get it back if you have that sidecar file. But what if you don't have the sidecar file? Then you just have the raw with no adjustments made and all your photos will essentially be unedited and untouched. But with DNG, the reason why I use it is because it contains whatever sliders I touch um, in Lightroom, they are saved inside the raw file and that is really nice. It's basically its own self-contained backup system. Other than the Lightroom catalog, which contains all your information and edits, the raw file will contain it as well in itself. Okay, that was a mouthful. Um, the next option is copy, which will not change the file format at all. It will stay, in my case, .cr3 or whatever your format is, JPEG or, you know, 
NIK, whatever you got, it won't change it. It'll just move it. And it says copy photos to a new location and add to catalog and then move and add. Um, those are grayed out because I'm using an SD card. I think if these files are on a local hard drive, I could move them from one to another and then add will simply keep them where they are, which would already be on my hard drive. If I had moved them over manually, you know, let's just drag and drop into a new folder on my hard drive. Then I would choose add because I'm just adding them to the Lightroom catalog. I won't, I don't want to move those files in that case. Again, that's if I manually move the files from SD card to hard drive. If you do that, then you just want to use add because you're just adding them to the Lightroom catalog catalog, which is just a database of where your images are, but I want to move them to my hard drive and I want to convert them as DNG. Let's move a little further to the right. Now this is our two. So over here is our from converting to DNG and then two, here's our destination where it's going to end up. So currently I have everything on my H hard drive, which is an external drive and it's in my photography folder. It already shows that there. You can of course click on other destinations and find where you want them to go to if that doesn't show up what you want there. And now let's move our way downwards because these are all a bunch of little panels that we can expand and collapse to make things cleaner and simpler. And let's start with the very first one, file handling. So essentially here you pick what the heck you want to happen to these files that you're moving from SD card to your hard drive. I'm going to keep this as embedded in sidecar, which is going to use the embedded JPEG image that's inside of every raw made by your camera. And it's going to use that as these small little thumbnail preview that you will in most cases actually be editing a JPEG preview until you zoom into 100%, then it will actually load all the data from the raw file, which can be five to 10 times more than the JPEG data. So Lightroom is really smart and efficient and you're, you're just looking and working on a JPEG until you get in too close and it has to load the raw. That's just, that's what previews are. It's basically like a, a short kind of a kind of a proxy version of your large file. Smart previews is if you are going to be um, basically removing your hard drive from your computer, but you still want to work on the previews, a smart preview will allow you to do that. That's great if you work on a laptop or even a tablet but your files are actually stored externally, say at home, and you want to work out in the field or on the go on a trip, and then you come home and connect your hard drive to the original files and it'll update them. It's really neat. So that's how smart previews are. I don't use that because everything is local on my tower computer here in my office. You can make a second copy to another backup hard drive, for example. That's really nice. Let's move on down to file renaming. So this is another reason why I like to use Lightroom to import my files, because if I manually drag them from SD card folder to a hard drive, folder these have the original file names for my camera and they're really boring and not very helpful they're there there's technical you know just random numbers and letters usually so i want to give it a specific name for each photo shoot and i like to use custom name dash sequence which allows me to type in a custom name so i'm going to say ava skate shoot Okay, so I know what it is. In 10 years, when I find this random file sitting around, I say, oh yeah, Ava, the skate shoe. And she was you know, nine and now she's 19. <laughs> um, so I know what that was. Not too long, not too descriptive, but just enough to where if I wake up on the wrong side of the bed on Monday morning, I know what that file refers to and where it came from. Next is the start number. So I'm going to start this at one. Let's say I import, you know, a thousand pictures from a wedding and then I have a second SD card for my second shooter or my second card that I needed to switch to. I can start this at 1001 and it'll pick my second import process will pick up and start at 1001 and build upwards from there. But I just have one set of photos here for one card. So I'm going to keep that as one. It shows you a little preview here. Ava skate shoot hyphen one dot DNG. That's what the first image is going to look like. The second one's going to be dash two dash three dash four and so on. Let's minimize that. Let's go to the third panel here. Apply during import. You can apply a preset upon this very first import stage. Now, I am not a big uh, preset user at all, but I did make my own import preset here that basically has some very foundational edits that I found myself doing to 95% of my photos over and over and over and over. And I realized, you know, I'm wasting time. Why don't I make a preset for this and just use that? And I was so happy when I found that because that saves me, um, saves me some time there. Uh, metadata, I'm just going to leave that how it is. Keywords, this is really cool. If you find yourself searching for images for something like journalistic work or blogs or, or stock photos, you may find keywords very helpful. I don't use them, but I'll show you how it works. I'm going to add her name in case I want to search for that in the future. I'm going to add skates, skating. You can type in the city where you did it, kid and child, in case I want to find pictures of kids for something. And that's it. Now, these keywords will be applied to all these photos that are selected, and that is searchable later. 
Okay, the last panel is the destination. So it is going into H forward slash photography folder, but inside that I want it to have its own specific subfolder for the shoot. And I have a different video on how I organize my photography work, but it's pretty simple. I have a master photography folder and inside that folder is all of my photo shoots. You can actually see it right here. All my recent gigs from probably this past year are currently on this hard drive. Once it fills up, I'll start a new hard drive, but I have the same folder structure. So each individual photo shoot or job gets its own unique name. So I'm going to name this Ava Skate. And this is super important. I think I forgot to do this on my first import video that's super old now. Choose into one folder for the love of God, unless you want to be clicking through folders and folders and folders of the year, the month, the date, and then your shoot folder, which would be Ava Skate. Please choose into one folder. It makes things so much simpler. It makes it like this. If you like this, then choose into one folder. If you want to have all your shoots organized by a year subfolder and then a month and then a date subfolder, that's a lot of clicking and a lot of thinking and time. I don't want that. Uh, that's just not me. And if I was a photojournalist or working for National Geographic or doing events every week for some company, I would probably do that, but I'm not. So into one folder, it is for me. So pretty much done. Made our selection. We told it what's happening to the files. We gave it a destination. We told it the uh, file handling, the renaming. Um, and the little import trick and we are done. So I'm going to click import and you can see up here it's processing copy and import. So the first thing that it does is it copies these uh, .CR3s onto my hard drive. And then once that's done, it'll go back again and it'll convert those to DNG. I can start editing these right now and Lightroom will take care of that conversion process. There won't be any issue. I don't need to wait. I'm ready to rock and roll already. And if I scroll down, I can see there it is, Aviscate folder right here, which is what I'm looking at. And you'll see this number of photos continue to grow as the files are copied in. I'm going to collapse this top panel to get some more room on my screen and expand this right side panel. If we click on any of these images and go to keywording panel, we can see all these keywords are automatically added and that's super cool. We can go to metadata and look at any kind of metadata that's saved within the image, such as the settings, the date and time, the serial number for the camera, copyright information, this is a DNG format version. There's a lot of data inside of your images and Lightroom is a pro at allowing you to access, um, alter and even search based on any of this metadata. So that is the gist of how I import my files into Lightroom, keep them organized. And it just overall makes my job so much easier because I know where my files are. They have a convenient name. And now that I've imported them with Lightroom, they are automatically put into the Lightroom catalog, which allows me to edit them. I can call them based on metadata like I mentioned earlier. I'm right here. I'm filtering based on my lenses that I used or aperture numbers that were used. And it's just an essential first step to effective and time efficient editing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If I missed anything or messed something up, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer your questions. Thanks for watching and have a great week importing your photos the right way.